just saw something on TikTok that I can't talk about. <laughs> okay. Okay. Chill. It's Friday, August 20th. I just spit on myself. <clears throat> How you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing well. So today is going to be fun where I have a video with Lilo on more ruler options for storage. I also... We're going to say who won the box, or the three people that won my box, each won a box of my fabric from cleaning out my stuff. And I'm happy to say two are in the United States. One is in Canada. But you're not going to get that till the end. So, uh, I, you guys, I love it when you send me imagery, imagery that I can share with you. And again, if you send me stuff at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at Gmail, you can be sure that I will see it. So Evelyn sent me stripes and polka dots, you know, talking back to Wednesday, made out of the Tula fabric that I was slobbering on on Wednesday. And what is so interesting to me is, okay, I don't think it's all Tula, but boy, you can see those stripes and polka dots in there. That, it looks like solids too. That is a complete colorway I would not have come up with. And it's beautiful, but that just shows how um, diverse Tula's collection was. So thank you so much, Evelyn, for sending that to me. And then Bonnie, not um, not Scrap Bonnie, Bonnie went and sent me a picture of Scrap Bonnie's pattern, a spider web, I think it, it's what it is, is with those as crazy red polka dots. I'm telling, you know, actually, Bonnie, that looks like it is a antique. You know, I guess the polka dots would make it so that it's not, but man, uh, Bonnie Hunter, brain freeze. Um, that is fun. I love scrap quilts beyond measure. I love every single thing about them, which is why three of you are going to be lucky getting some leftovers so you can make a scrap quilt. And again, there's no rhyme or reason how um, the boxes were put together. It was a matter of just uh, clean out this color, this color, this color. Okay, that box filled, boom. So if you get a color you don't like, sorry man, use it for a swap or something like that, okay? This is, oh, I wanna get back to uh, the wedding. Um, jo Mary Kay actually put together um, the wedding video. Patricia Bolton, because somebody was asking, who's Pokey? Pokey, Pokey, Pokey. Patricia Bolton has been in the industry for at least 30 years. Um, she recently got remarried at age 50 to Patrick. And Patricia Bolton was instrumental in where the art quilter is today, along with Yvonne Purcella. They were, they were very, very tight. Anyways, Mary Kay put together this video. It was soup. There's been a lot of imagery going around on Instagram, Facebook. I showed some stuff on Wednesday. Uh, if you want to know where... Oh, I wanted to share this quilt for you with you. Uh, as you all know, the tennis court was hugged in, in uh, quilts, but I love this one quote, tell me what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I just love that. I, let's think about it in that way, right? Your precious life. Life is a gift, that's for sure. So if you don't know where to find this video, um, you will go to the front page of thequiltshow.com and you can see on the right there's a pop out and it will take you to the latest newsletter. Now, I would not wait three days from now because that pop out will be something else and we're pop up. And we're not trying to annoy you with pop ups, but it's because the site is so dang deep and so rich with content, we want to make sure we can direct you to what the newest things are. Originally, it was vertical, and it just covered too much of the screen. Now, I only have one complaint about this. Why can't Ricky's face be covered up? <laughs> it's got to be mine. <laughs> so, just kidding. Not. <laughs> Not. 
<laughs> so let's take a look. I'm trying to see if comments are coming in and I don't quite know where to find them. I always get confused on where to pop that whole thing out. Maybe John will come in and show me. But anyways, in the meantime, I'd like to uh, put up uh, Lilo's video and uh, John's coming in to show me where the pop-ups are. I don't know where to find them. The little icon that shows the bubble. Where? Oh, the one that has like people talking? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, TikTok got to me. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Let's go take a look of Lilo. Lilo Bowman, who is was our first employee at thequiltshow.com and has been with us ever since and who wrote a book on organization and keeps taking it to the next level. So here we go. Hello, Lilo Bowman, how are you today? We are good. It's 100 degrees here in lovely Fort Worth, Texas. And it's just about noon. <laughs> right so we're all inside hopefully uh, you know to it's, it's funny lot. because i had a friend that said rain was quilting weather well so is 100 degrees because nobody is going out in this weather right absolutely it is way way too hot we get up early in the morning to go out and walk the dogs but after that we're trying to stay in yeah. as much as possible yeah <laughs> well i am just so glad that you're taking time out to be with us because you work with tqs you've been our, our longest employee i'm not going to say oldest because that wouldn't be fair but longest and not so long ago you had a book come out do you have a copy of it there i just so happen to have one here there we go love your creative space and what's so interesting is that so many times when an author does a book it's okay on to the next one but this whole subject matter is just growing and you're lecturing guilds and you're getting questions you guys are emailing me saying please have lilo talk about xyz and so today we're talking about z and what is that uh, rulers i actually had a, a, a lady ask in a lecture the other night about she has so many rulers they're stacking all over the floors and what she, could she do with them and then it just happened that you know a day or two later here i am I have hung up my new pegboard and I'm going through my own ruler collection. And what do I find? I find, I mean, you know, this is just a small sampling of stuff that I found. This actually, let me see if I can find it. This is actually, I started quilting in 1998. This is the very first ruler I ever bought. And I still have it. It's, the thing is, is it's not a bad ruler. Uh, you know, there's lots and lots of wonderful rulers, but there are those ones sort of like your favorite coffee mug. There may be 10 mugs in the co in the cupboard and you're going to go to those two or three because they feel good in your hand. You like the shape. And so while this is, this is a perfectly good ruler that I used, you know, for a number of years, I now have my favorites. And so why am I still holding on to this old one? Plus another dozen of other ones that I have new ver newer versions, newer favorite versions of. And so the, the biggest thing is um, we need to go culling through and you and I are doing our studio. So we're doing a lot of culling of things. And what about your rulers? I'm assuming you also had I lots had of a million rulers. And then honestly, when we started doing Quilters Select, I mean, those were my go-tos. And so I got, I, I, I call it now passing to the left. If there's something you're not going to use, pass it to the left and let somebody else use it. And so I, right. you know, I mean, share because somebody needs it. And I want to say this too. I was quilting when uh, rotary cutters were invented and there were no rulers and we would use a drafting ruler. I don't have one right here, but it was 18 by two, I think. And it was paper thin and i mean so then came the rotary rulers and they just keep right. getting better and better and better right and there are there are things that i think appeal to you as an individual different kinds of things such as um like your culture select rulers which i really like they have this sort of a film on the back which means the ruler doesn't slide around mm -hmm. which is really handy when you're doing um, lots and lots of cuts and you maybe you're you've had a cup of coffee or two too many and you've got a little <laughs> bit of a giggle you know with your hands um and so that's one of the things that i that i really like about it um and and then there's also you know like this one that i found 
It has zero labeling on it. I have no <laughs> idea what's there. You go. There you go. It has no labeling on it at all. So I don't even know what this is for. I think it's a um, half square triangle. <laughs> I, I think so. But, you know, it's just that. And then there's some that I have. And they're, again, they're perfectly great rulers. I've never even opened this. So obviously, if I haven't looked at this since we were taping out in California, which is when I got this, the likelihood that I'm going to pick it up next week, next month is pretty slim. So That's I would rather slim. pass it pass it on to somebody else who is looking for something like this and they're going to work with it. Um, yeah. So apps, so that leads us into, well, how many rulers does a quilter need and what's, what are the best sizes, especially for somebody starting out, you know, there's, there's a hundred thousand rulers out there. They're really, every size they really are. And, and especially with most people, they're on budget. What do you, what do we want to get suggest to them that they get? Are you asking me? Well, I can tell you what my favorites are and see if they kind of line okay. up with yours. Because I have a number um, one. Number one. A number one. Okay, so my probably number one go to, and I know this is uh, this is a different brand, but this is a six six by twelve. I love yep. love gonna, love this shape. I'm back. Six because by twelve. It, okay, six That's by twelve one. because it's got you know all the. The angles on it large enough that I can see it. It's not too big, so I'm not cutting you know further than my arm will reach. Love this. I also have the longer version, which is I think what is it six by twenty four. My number for... two. Okay. Now I know um, a lot of people buy the six by twenty four first, thinking bigger is better. Yeah. And the problem with six by twenty four is it they'll start hitting you in the stomach. I mean, I use it for when I'm cutting long strips and stuff like that. Everybody needs a six by twelve. This one. That's my. This opinion. is one number one. Yeah. Um, I would say probably the next size down that I find really helpful is the. Uh, is it a seven by seven or six six by six? A square. That's another one. A square, but it's not the twelve by twelve because that to me is a little too unwieldy. It's too large. It's a next size down. And then I also, because I've been doing a lot, not lately, but when I was, I was doing a lot of little piecing. And so the four by four was another one that I really, really like. And I, I want to I wanna throw something else out there while we're just talking about rulers. If you learn on a ruler, like I think QS has a six and a half by six and a half. Okay. It, it has a six by six also, but I learned without the half inch. And I use the six and a half ruler and it goofs me up every time. So there are some people that want the extra half inch and those that don't want it. And you need to identify that ab about yourself. Right. And, and I'm a lefty like you, although I cut with left and right. But what I really like is that you have the numbers all the way across. Yeah. Let me across here, but I still count. I still go one, two, three, four, you know, because I need to just, in my mind, this is the size cut that I want to make. I wonder if that's um, a left-hander thing. Do you think that's a left-hander thing? I don't, I don't know. Or it's just, maybe I'm in a hurry and I'm not willing to, you know, what is it? Measure three times and then cut once. I just want to measure once and cut. Yeah. yeah <laughs> hope yeah. it's right. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so, so what are you are saying my, here? So, so what are you saying here? Excuse me. Well, I'm saying that you don't need to buy every ruler that's out there on the market. You know, okay. find something that's really going to be your workhorse rulers that work for a lots and lots of different things. And then when you start branching out into, you know, needing half square triangles or Dresden plates, absolutely, you can go and, and get those things. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you don't need to have 17 rulers that are all squares, you know, with within a couple of inches of each other. You can you can deal with just those. Um, the other thing is that, <clears throat> especially if you have a large collection, and let's say you have one area where, like your cutting mat, you could keep the larger rulers or the ones that you're going to use most of the time. Keep those near the cutting area because you're going to be using that six and a half, that six inch by twelve inch for all the time. Lots and lots of your cuts. So go ahead. I didn't have, don't have a uh, pegboard because I don't have room, but I just have a bull clip, and then I have a little hook that I can hang it on the wall. So it's right there. You can put it on the side of your cutting table, depending on what you have. But I have this right next to my cutting table all the time. I also have another rotary cutter right there. Right. So that if I have another area where I'm working, I can have another ruler in that area. So I would say put like with like, 
Same thing when you're storing. If you've got lots and lots and lots of triangles, keep those all together instead of a drawer that just has everything in it because then you're going to have to sort through it. So have all the triangles together, all the squares together, all the you know other weirdo shapes, um, <laughs> that sort of thing. So, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. But I've got some pictures that I wanted to show you of what <clears throat> we've seen that other people have done with their rulers. This is great. Pegboards are fabulous. Um, they can really hold all those really odd shapes. You know, there's some for, for rotary, um, for long arming, for free motion quilting, where you're wanting a little bit of a ruler help. Those are really odd and crazy shapes to try to put in a drawer. So no a pegboard works. <clears throat> and then there should be um, another one. Back of the door, excuse me, I've been talking a lot the last few days. <clears throat> if you've got room on the back of the door, that's another place to really hang a bunch of rulers. And you can see this is really simple. This was sent by uh, one of the people that I gave a lecture to. It's just command hooks on the back of her door to hold all the different kinds of sizes of rulers. And they're really handy for her to get. And they're not, they're not falling over on the floor. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, let's take, oh, my drawer. We're looking at my drawer. Looking at your drawer. You don't want something hanging on the wall. You like things that are in a closet or a drawer. And so what was your decision making process on this? Um, I, I, <clears throat> I wanted it out of the way because I had just stuff clutter everywhere. And so right. I made sure when I had the cupboards built, I made sure there was a drawer that was large enough and wide enough for uh, the rulers to be able to nestle in there. But I got to tell you, when I see what Krista is doing, I kind of went, ooh, I, sh I should have yeah, thought of that I and I didn't. So let's take a look yeah. at that. I thought that was really clever. Brilliant. Krista Watson was on our show in show 2409 and she redid her studio or she moved to a house and then she was able to set up a studio. And these are Ikea kitchen cabinets, uh, which I think is great. And she put those four uh, ruler wooden uh, holders inside and she said they could, those rulers can stand up. So she just pulls that out and then selects which one she wants. Okay, I thought you, that was brilliant. Are you talking about um, like in the kitchen section of a store when you see a, like what you would dry your um, dishes on, like the wood rack with the dowels coming up? I mean, how did she get those no, things up? It's, it's those, um, you see them in all the quilt shows. They're the wooden pieces of uh, block and they have these these guard rails in them and so you can set your rulers up oh i've got that you right over one. here at my table yeah okay she has four of those that she set inside of okay. that drawer which means that all the rulers will sit up really nicely you know just the one right behind the other and she's and they're just the kitchen cabinets um from ikea in the kitchen department which i ticket, thought was but the ticket is is if you've got big big rulers i'm looking at my thing make sure that yeah. the drawer is deep enough just like one of my drawers is for my AccuQuick go and i had to um make sure that the drawer was big enough to accommodate the bigger cutting beds right. so you just have to kind of think right. all through yeah yeah but i thought that was a really yeah, clever I like idea that a lot you, know, you don't want things out and it looks to me from her place that she uses more smaller rulers and not the the big long one, she, the big long one she has another place for. And by the way, I loved her show. Her stuff is so colorful and wonderful. If you guys haven't watched it yet, go check it out. What was the number again? It's 2409. Crystal Watson. And she lives in, in the Las Vegas area. So um, okay. definitely colorful, like Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. And now we're looking at your dad. Yeah, this is my dad. This is actually in our bedroom, but I saw a similar idea to this uh that somebody put on pinterest they had taken what's called a floating shelf mm -hmm. and put their rulers on it now their shelf had a nice little lip on it which i really liked so that the things don't fall off mm -hmm. this is a shelf that you can order i got it through lowe's it came as one long piece oh took four screws into the wall and you see it's about seven six feet long because that's how long the, the dresser is and you can line up a whole bunch of rulers i you know, love you can do that uh, and you can have that right over your cutting area and they're right there. Uh, you can even put sort of by style again, you know, square next to triangle next to 
uh, rectangle, what have you. And uh, we painted it to match the wall. So that way it just isn't even really Lends noticeable. In. I think, I think yeah. the ticket is you've got to look at your space, assess the accessibility of where you have walls, where you have drawers. And I like the thing like behind the door because, yeah, perfect. Why not use it? Um, I mean, you're really thinking this stuff through. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, well, it's also really great when people ask because I don't always think of what is a problem for everyone. It may not be for me, but it's obviously an issue that they're having to deal with. Right. So those questions coming because it's great because it gives us some really yeah, good please. ideas of things to share if, with you all. If you if you want uh, Lilo to speak to something, you can get hold of her or me. Uh, my email is a l e x a n d r s n at gmail, and yours is Lilo Bowman at lilobowman dot com. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. wanted to lecture to your guild and all that, get hold of her that way. She's pretty busy. You're, you're booking, I mean, you are busy lady. I am. Those people at TQS keep me really busy. And when <laughs> I'm not working for them, I'm doing lectures. <laughs> and a lot of people ask about the quilt behind you. We can't see the whole thing. Tell us just briefly oh. about it, please. Um, it's a quilt by Ann Shaw, and it is a dogwood, which is hard to see because I'm blocking a lot of it. Um, but she studied a lot with Ruth McDowell and got Ruth McDowell's blessing. And so this is a Ruth McDowell-esque yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, type of a quilt. But yes, I, I, uh, she brought it to one of the tapings that we had, and I bought the quilt because it is perfect in my studio i love that limey yellow green and so that's the perfect one well yeah, that's a hazard of working at the quilt show.com people go i want that quilt and sometimes the artist will <laughs> go home richer <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely yeah so thank you so much say hi to mom and dad and david please i will well thank you so much for having me and i'll see you next time we come up with something great to share give us ideas you guys give us ideas let her hit it out of the yeah. ballpark have a good one lilo yeah. bowman Thank you, Alex. Bye-bye. Well, that was fun. I was madly making notes while you guys were chatting on the side, giving, throwing in your ideas too. So let me go down some of them, okay? Linda <clears throat> said that she lost a ruler because the command hook broke. And so it you know, broke the edge of the ruler. And then Vicki said to use the large command hooks with a wire back. I'm gonna say right now, do not hold us responsible for anything that might happen to your ruler during your storage preparation and 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 whatever, <laughs> we're just giving ideas. <laughs> so, um, also, then somebody said, "What about quilting?" Uh, um, chic quilt chic asked, um, or chick chic chick asked about quilting rulers, how to store, whether you store by what you use, by brand, whatever. You know, the bottom line is, and this is what I've learned from Lilo, is that what works for me it will it may not work for you. And it depends on your setup and all that. I would be inclined to want to be able to grab the ones I want first. You know, unless say you're doing a tutorial with say Amanda Murphy and you had all her rulers, maybe you'd want to segregate those. So I don't know. I wish it was live with Lee though, so she could answer that. But I think you have to look at what makes most sense for you. And what makes most sense is whatever creates the least around uh, the least amount of searching. That's what I would say. And accessibility. Um, Kaz said, change of subject, cool kaleidoscope was super liberating for people who must plan their quilts. I, yeah, and it's still there. It will be there on the quilt show. So you might want to take a look at that. Okay, then um, Christy asked, how do you use retro clean? Well, the instruction for antique lace and things that are very fragile, there is um, instructions on the packet and we do sell it in the store, but in the end, this is what you do. You get yourself a, like a paint bucket, depending on the size, you know, from the um, hardware store. I like a white one so I can see what's going on. And you put um, warm water in and then whatever amount of retro clean goes with the amount of warm water you put in, again, that would be on the back of it. Stir it up, then put, the, put your um, piece in there. Stir it, stir it, stir it. It may, and then 
the next day if it's not done. And by the way, the water is going to start turning brown. The next day, if it's not done, dump it out and do it again and just keep doing it. And I am telling you that crochet bedspread in our room was brown, coffee brown when we got it. And it's beautiful, just off white the way it was in its original format. Plus, Martha Pullen believes in biz, B-I-Z. You get that at the grocery store. Actually, I had to get it online because our grocery store didn't have it. So I think that um, I think that it's worth exploring. And in fact, I was thinking about it. We have John's mother's wedding dress, which was exquisite. I mean, it classic. And it's wrecked. And just the other night I was in bed and I thought, you know, I'm going to pull that out and see if Retro Clean will get it clean. You know, wouldn't that be great? I mean, all this, it's silk with all the, it was fitted. It was, it was Jackie Kennedy perfect. Okay. Just perfect. So let's see. Um, oh, also Bree is going to be doing more uh, ruler work videos for us on how to do it on your sewing machine, you know, the bigger rulers, which Quilter Select has come out with. And I found the first one to be very useful. I think we did it last Friday, if you want to go back and watch it because you missed it, because the curved rulers and all that with QS is a whole new game for me. Oh, I want to show you this too. This was a ruler that uh, Deanna Loader's husband made us at our retreat, and he made a ton of them, and I begged her for more, and she gave me some more. And what's so great is I've got my drawer of rulers, but then I've got this that's sitting right beside with whatever ever project I'm working on. You will always find a 6x12 in there always, but then all the other little ones. So I like this. The other thing that Lilo shares in her lecture, I meant to put in a slide, there was, if you go to the baby section, they've got these bottle drying racks and they look like green grass. That holds rulers. That's great. Also, I apologize. One of you sent me a picture of how you um, did your rulers. I'm so sorry. I, for, in the middle of this presentation, I'm going, oh, brother. And basically she got like canvas and then put her rulers in stacks on the floor on the canvas and then sewed pockets that fit those ruler sizes. Duh. I mean, talk about organized. That's fabulous. So I think it's time to do some winners. Yay. So I, I want to start uh, the first person I want to show you, get over to my pictures. Um, okay, first of all, every single person that won was a star member. And I want you to know that means you're a paid member. It's only 49 bucks for a year at the Quilt Show, and you have access to all our first-class shows, the whole bit. We have a new show rollout every other week. In fact, we're going to go tape starting uh, next week. And without your membership, this would not be happening. So if you're, I know most of you are members and I so am so grateful for that. But on Wednesday, somebody said, well, how do I become a member? You go to thequiltshow.com and you join now. So thank you. All right. So the first person, I is a star member and I believe has six quilts in our member gallery. We want to see what you're doing. So here is her quilt that's in our member gallery. And the winner is first, Carol Kay from San Marcos, California. Yay, Carol! Do something wonderful with my fabric. Oh, one person said throw some of my old rulers in those boxes too. <laughs> that's funny. No. <laughs> No, I already got rid of them, but that was really a, a, a cute, a cute idea. Yeah, I didn't see that one. So Carol K, yay from San Marcos. Okay, now the uh, next person is on the other side of the United States. Okay, and her, she is from Virginia, VA, Virginia, from Amherst, and it is June D. Yay, June! Okay, 
And then last but not least, this makes me really happy that it's somebody outside of the United States because we do serve, I think, over 100 countries. And, you know, of course, most of the people are from the U.S., but we love it when they're from out of the U.S. And this person is from Canada, from Ontario, Canada. In fact, London, Ontario, Canada. And it's Mary W. Yay! I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. So this is what's going to happen, guys. Um, Kristen will be contacting each of you via email because, of course, we need your snail mail. All right? I will take the boxes out to work today, and uh, they'll get them probably shipped out Monday. So I'm very happy. This makes me very happy that this is going to um, happy homes. You know, I've got a lot of entries too. I'm surprised at how many of you want this stuff. So, yay! <laughs> okay, so what else is going on? Okay, tomorrow Dee has her class and, and she's working on that fabulous red quilt. We still have some of those kits available. Fabulous. And it's one of, it's a quilt that I wish I had designed. And so she's walking us through the whole thing. She is a pattern reader. I am not. So we are together. Perfect match. On Monday, I have an interview with Jennifer Sampu. Um, she is, uh, she's all, she, she understands digital and one of you digital fabrics. And in, in fact, she does it with her ombre, her sky collection, which is beautiful. And so we're going to look at her ombre collection, but she's going to talk about digital and why digital and what are the possibilities with digital and all that. So that's Monday. And then um, Tuesday, we're heading to Texas. And then for the, the, the next of that week and the next of the next week, We'll just be doing live pop-ups because I there's no way, right? We got a bunch of great guests. Um, I'm very excited about the taping. And it's always interesting to me. Well, Rob Weller told me from Simply Quilts, you just never know till the guest walks in the room. You just don't know. And I can't believe quilting as long as I have, excuse me, that I am still learning stuff. But I suppose... That's what makes this craft so dang interesting. So let me go over. Um, Carmen, I'm not very computer savvy. Um, yes, you are. You're here. <laughs> Figure out this. You're here. Uh, I remember when I had to learn the computer. I think Joey was in, I think it was kindergarten. And, and they were looking for moms to help volunteer. And I was so afraid. I was so scared. And I realized that you can't break it. And what happened when we started TQS in 07, women would come up and say, well, my husband says I break his computer. Well, that's, no. Um, you know, you can't break it. And so you just search around, you snoop, and don't open any emails that look unauthorized. <laughs> that's my other tip, all right? So, um we are going, Melanie, we are going to be in um, the Dallas area. That's where uh, CRM studios are. And unfortunately, um, it is, we don't have an audience. I honestly do not, I don't foresee that in the future at all, um, just because of the craziness that's going on with COVID and stuff. I mean, we want people safe. And CRM, where we're at, is very... Uh, COVID, Save, very, these are the rules, with, which makes it easy for us because then we can just say to our people, because we're very cautious, the, the, this is what the rules are. So, um, Chantel, my cool kaleidoscope didn't work out. I have a bubble in the center. Oh, I can't help you. Oh, um. <laughs> if you email me at my Gmail, I'll forward it to Ricky if you want. Okay. All right, Jean. I've also been a member since the beginning, and I always learn something with each show. I mean, like dental floss. What was that about, right? Okay. If you haven't watched that show, teasing. Time to go. Um, I'm going to a 40th uh, anniversary this weekend, and I'm going to bring a charcuterie tray. Can't wait to 
take it. So have a good day, and I'll see you Monday with Jennifer. Uh, I found that I found that particular interview uh, very uh, riveting and um, learnable. I learned a lot at it. So okay, Gail says try some spray starch on it. All right, thanks guys. Have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>